Okay, so in this video, we are going to be going over the so-called array advanced game. And what we'll do in this video is describe this particular type of game. And this is something you may see in the context of an interview or perhaps a class. And we'll describe how this game is played and then we'll see a way to solve this particular game. And then we'll go about solving the game in Python. So let's go ahead and define the array advanced game. So the array advanced game is given as follows. You're given an array of non-negative integers. So for example, you might be given an array that looks something like this with entries 3310201. So they're non-negative integers. And each number represents the maximum number that you can advance in the array. So for instance, what you do is you start off at the beginning of the array and you want to reach the end. And this position here will tell you how many moves to the right you can move from the position that you're on. So for instance, I can move from this position here, a maximum of three positions to the right. So I can move to one, two, three to this position here. I can also move two or one positions to the right of this one. So I can move a max of three, but I can move any other number less than or equal to the number mentioned here. So the question that we want to solve, the question that this game is really based upon, is, is it possible to advance from the start of the array to the last element? So in other words, is given, given an array like this, is it possible to start from the beginning of the array and using the numbers that you're on, advance to the end, to the last element? So let's actually take a look at this example here and see if it's possible with this particular configuration. So the array that we're given, again, is the same one that we saw on the previous slide. And we can show that it is indeed possible to get from the start to the, to the end of this array. So the way that we can do that, we start off at the first position here. And instead of moving a max of three positions to the right, I'm going to move only one position to the right. So I'm going to denote the element that we previously processed as gray and the element that we're currently on as red. So we previously processed this one. We've moved. We decided to move one element to the right. And then we're on this, this one right here. So the next step that we're going to do is we're going to, from this uh, A of one position, we're going to move three positions to the right. So we're going to move from here, three positions to the right, and that will get us to this two. Again, the previous uh, position in the array that we were on is denoted in gray. The current one that we're on is now in red. So now all we have to do to get to the end is just use this number two, exhaust the number two to move two positions to the right. And if we do so, we end up at the end of the array. So we are able to advance from the beginning to the end. So let's take a look at an example array that this actually doesn't work for. So in other words, it's not possible to move from the left all the way to the right for this particular configuration. So we can see trying to exhaust that. So we can see, uh, let's start off here at the first position because we have to start off there. If we start off there, we can go a max of three to the right two or one. So if we go a max of three, that takes us to this zero over here. We're on the zero, but we can't move anymore to the right because zero uh, says that we can only move zero moves. So we're stuck there. Okay, so if we move instead two to the right, so again, we encounter another zero here, so that doesn't help us. So what if we move one to the right? If we move one to the right, we get to two. That's a little bit better. We can move one, two more to the right, but in, in the long run, that's not really any better at all because we end up again at this second zero. So this is actually the furthest we can get through this particular array. So we can't reach the end in this particular configuration. So I, I guess, uh, yeah, this is just more on that. So how, how do you go about given a, an array how does one go about deciding whether or not it's solvable? That is, how does one decide whether or not it's possible to go from the start to the finish given the integers stored in the array? So one possible example, or one possible approach rather, that you might think would be feasible would be to use something like a greedy approach. So that is, once you start off in the beginning position, just go with the maximum amount of positions to the right that you possibly can for whatever number you happen to be on. So that would be using a greedy strategy in this case. So we'll see here in this example, it actually doesn't work out. So this particular array configuration does indeed have a solvable approach, but is it's not achieved through a greedy strategy. So let's actually take a look at what a greedy strategy might be, uh, will give us in this case. So if we use a greedy strategy, again, we start off from the beginning part of the array. We, we're using a greedy strategy, so we use the maximum amount of moves that we can use from this position, which gives us two positions here to the right. We're on a one, we want to move well, the max is one, so we move one to the right over here. Now we're here. And again, we take the max of this, that's one. We move one position to the right, we only get to this zero element over here. 
So it's natural to think that a greedy approach might work, uh, but however, we can show through a counterexample here that it doesn't. So let's actually take a non-greedy approach and see that we can uh, get through this array without doing that. So the non-greedy approach is we can start off here on the right. Instead of moving two, let's just move one position to four. We can move, we can exhaust four in this case. We'll move all the way to two here. And then we can just move one position to the right and that is the end of the array. So a greedy approach is not going to work in this case, although that might be a natural first idea that pops into your head. So let's actually go through an approach that will work. So this is kind of the general idea of the approach itself. If this approach is vague or hard to understand, that's okay. We're going to go through some examples and then we're actually going to code up this example or this approach rather in Python to see how it actually works. So the approach is this. We want to iterate through every single entry in the array. So note that that will entail at least linear running time uh, unless we do anything else, which we won't. So it, it will at least entail linear running time. We want to track the furthest that we can reach from any position that we happen to be on in the array. So for instance, if we're at position i in the array, so if we're on, let's say, the zeroth position, the furthest we can move from the zeroth position or the ith position is that index in the array plus whatever element we happen to be on in that array. So for instance, if we're on this two here, the furthest we can move is whatever the element here is stored at, so two, plus the position relative in the array. So we're on the zeroth position, we can move two positions to the right, so one, two. For instance, if we were here, this four position, we're on the first position in the array, and it's the furthest we can reach from this position here is one. So we've, we've sort of taken into account that we're already this far in the array since we're on this number here, plus four. So that will give us one, two, three, four. So that will get us all the way to this two. So that will track the furthest that we can reach from a given entry in the array. And then if for a given index, for a given i, before the end is the furthest that we can reach, we can't reach the last index. Otherwise, we reach the end. So we'll go over why that is the case, or we'll, we'll at least see two examples of using this approach that we've considered so far and see why that works. So just note that i will be using for uh, the index that we're on, and then the furthest possible thing that we can advance to from the position that we're on, as we mentioned up here, is a of i plus i for the reasons that we just stated. So let's actually take a look at this approach from the example that we initially considered. So we're going to keep track of a variable that we'll call furthest reached, and this will keep track of the furthest thing that we have reached in the array thus far. So we've just started processing. The furthest thing that we've reached is the zeroth element, so we initialize it to zero. So then what we're going to do is we're going to iterate through the array one by one, each element by each element, and we're going to keep track of the furthest reached. And if the index at any point is greater than the furthest reached, then we know that we can't possibly get to the end. Otherwise, if, if we do get uh, i to be equal to the last position of the array, then we know that we can certainly reach the end of the array. So let's actually step through this example. The way that we'll update furthest reached is we'll take the max of furthest reached with the uh, position that we're on plus the index. So the element stored in the position that we're on in the array plus the index. So for instance, we're on the first element here, i is equal to zero. And the furthest thing that we can reach from this position here is is either, so the furthest that we've reached so far which initially is zero, right? Or a of zero plus zero. So a of zero plus zero is this position. So we're, this is the zeroth position plus the element stored here. So one, two, three. So the max of those two things will be three. So the furthest that we can reach from this point is this element here denoted in green. So I'm gonna denote the furthest element that we've reached in green, the element that we're processing in red, and then any previous elements that we have processed before in gray. So let's keep moving through this algorithm. So we move on to the next element in the array. So i is now one. We're processing this element here. And then we take the max of the furthest element that we've reached so far, which again was three, or a of one plus one. So we're on this element here. The furthest that we can go from this point is a of one. So that's three plus one, because that's the position that we're on in the index, uh, in the array. So three plus one is four. That'll get us all the way to this two. So we actually have a new furthest reached element. We update that furthest reach is now four instead of three. So it was previously zero, now it's, now it's two. <laughs> So moving on in the array, i is now equal to 2. So we're processing this element here, and then we update based on what the furthest reach is. So furthest reach is either 4 or a of 2 plus 2. So a of 2 plus 2, we have 1. 
So the element stored at the second position here is one plus two, that's three. So we can't, um, that we're not gonna do any better in that case. So the furthest reached is actually the best in this case. So furthest reach is still four. So we continue on in this case. So now i is equal to three, we're processing this red element here. And we check whether or not a of three, so zero plus three is um, going to be better than the furthest that we've reached. So it's not going to be any better. So it's just going to be three. Furthest reach we've reached so far is four. So that still wins out. So two is still highlighted in green here. So now we're processing two. So we're on the fourth index. And now the furthest thing that we can reach is updated to six because we can take the position that we're on here with this two and we can move a max of two positions to the right. So the furthest thing that we can reach now is actually the last index of the array. So we've gotten to the end of the array. So that's the end that's the end of it. And I guess just one final iteration if you really wanted to is um, kind of when you break outside of the loop, you're now processing this last element here. You can't do any better, you're still at six. So now let's take a look at this example when you can't reach the end of it. And let's see how this, um, basically how our breaking condition breaks in this particular example. So this is another array that we considered before. We know there's no possible way to get from the start of the array to the end of it. So again, we're going to use the same strategy. We start off at the first element here, i is equal to zero. This is the one we're processing. And the furthest thing that we can reach, again, that initially is initialized to zero, we take the max of zero or a of zero plus zero, which in this case is three. So we can move one, two, three positions from the initial location in this array. That will get us right here where the element here is highlighted in green. So let's continue to process the next element here highlighted in red. So i is equal to 1. So again, what we do is we check whether or not this position here will get us any closer. It actually just gets us to the same position that we had before. So max of 3 and 3 is still 3. So this is still the furthest thing that we've reached so far. So we're going to keep moving on. So now we're processing this zero element. Again, we can't move any further because we can't go any further from zero. So a2 plus 2 is not going to be any better than 3. So the max that we have so far is three. And now what we have is we have a case where i is equal to three, and we're checking if a of three plus three is uh, any bigger than furthest reach, which one of those two is bigger. So in this case, it's still three. Three is still the best that we can do. And in fact, now that we've surpassed the furthest element that we've reached, that is now that the index has gone beyond this element here, the furthest thing that we've reached, we know that we can't possibly reach the end of this array, so therefore we, we just break out of in, in, well, what is kind of a loop in this case, what will be a loop when we code this up in Python. So I hope that's clear. If that's not clear, then hopefully going through the example Python code as we code it up together will make it a little bit more concrete. This is something that also might make more sense to sit down in a quiet room with a piece of paper and just try to work out yourself. Um, it's not necessarily intuitive or straightforward why this works initially. So I encourage you to pause the video and maybe convince yourself that this actually works as expected. So with that said, let's go ahead and navigate over to a terminal so we can actually start to code up this algorithm. So let's actually call this uh, array advance. And then this is going to take an array, which will denote as A as input. So just like we did for the examples, we're going to have two things. We're going to have a furthest reached variable, which will initialize to zero. And then we also want to keep track of the last index because we don't want to read past the index and we also want to keep track if we actually hit the last index of the array. So we're actually going to denote that as the length of a minus one. So we're going to say last index, we'll say, is equal to the length of the array that we're given minus one. And then of course we want to keep track of the element in the array that we're processing. And the way that we're going to keep track as we iterate through the elements is with this iterator i variable. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a while loop that's going to mimic the process that we saw with the previous two examples. We're going to say while i is less than or equal to the furthest thing that we've reached, so furthest reached, and we don't want to read, and we're strictly less than the last index of the array, and furthest reached is less than strictly the last index of the array. What we're going to do is we're going to do exactly what we saw in the example as well. We're going to update furthest reached. So we're going to say furthest reached is equal to the max of furthest reached and a of i plus i, which again is the position relative to where we are in the array plus the element that we happen to be on. And that's going to tell us where uh, essentially the, the most position to the right that we can navigate to from the position that we're on in the array.
And then, of course, since we're in a while loop, we're going to increment i by 1. So we're going to say i plus equal to 1. And then what we're going to do is we're going to return. We're going to return whether or not furthest reached. If this is less, if this is greater than or equal to the last index, then that's going to let us know that indeed it is possible to reach the end of the array. If this comparison is not true, then that will let us know that the end is not possible. It's not possible to reach the end of the array in this case. So let's actually take a look at the two examples that we went over in these slides. So let's define an array A. Let's say A1 is equal to 3310201. So I believe that was the example from the slides. And then let's print out whether or not it's possible to advance to the end of this array. So we'll say A1. Let's go ahead and write that and then we'll give it a run. So python arrayadvance.py is what I called this file. So let me clear this because there's some extra output here. Clear, and then let me run this again. So we see true. So indeed, we know that for that particular example that we have here, this is uh, it is possible to go from the start to the finish. There is a configuration that allows you to do that. Let's verify that for the other example that we were considering where we know it's not possible, let's make sure that the array advance function returns false for that case. So we'll say A2 is equal to the other example, 3200201. And then let's do the same thing. Let's print out array advance of A2 and make sure that we get false here. So we should see true, false. So indeed we see true and false. So that seems to have correctly identified this one as being possible and this one as not being possible. So that's pretty much it for this video. If you have any questions or comments or anything else, please don't hesitate to leave them in the description below. As always, the code for all of the videos will be available on my GitHub page. You can just look at the at that page there if you want to just download the code and run it yourself. Uh, thanks again for watching and have a great day. Bye.